Hello everyone, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to the Dune Q&A. This video is about taking the most asked questions from my followers about Dune. I asked you all what are some of the things that you want to know about Denis Villeneuve's Dune. I'm going to answer these questions to the best of my ability with everything that I know. Now these things are subject to change based on the final product, but I'll answer them as truthfully and honestly as I can without giving too much away. Now just to be warned there are going to be some spoilers, things will be revealed that have not yet been revealed. So be careful, if you don't want to know the answer after I've asked the question, you can check out another video of mine. Before we begin, thank you to all my Patreons for your support, thank you to my YouTube followers and my followers on Facebook and Twitter, you guys make it worthwhile. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so that you can see my videos first, and keep up to date. With that being said, let's begin. The first question comes from my Patreons. Miroslav asks, supposedly the two planned movies will divide the book in such a way that the first movie will focus on Atreides and Caladan slash Arrakis. Do you think that the House Fenring will feature in the second movie along with House Carino, or do you think they will drop them or maybe change their role? Denis Villeneuve is really going for a faithful adaptation of Dune, so he does want to include all of the houses as much as he can, as much as time will allow, because time is a factor in this film. There's a lot of ground to cover, so they will be talking about different houses, the different factions. There's more of a focus on groups, I think, than the other houses. The main houses they're focusing on in Dune Part 1 will be the Harkonnen, and the Atreides. They have to build the bad blood between the Harkonnen and the Atreides. So this is the main focus in Denis Villeneuve's Dune. And you're right, I do think that the second part of the film has more room to talk about other houses, including House Corino and House Fenring. So that could be a factor in perhaps some uh, backstory element in Dune Part 2, flashbacks for example, or they could go to the actual homeworlds in the current timeline of Dune Part 2, so that is a factor. Spencer asks, my main question right now is how the weirding way will be handled. I hope the studio is comfortable enough to keep it book accurate rather than try something like the weirding modules from the Lynch film. In terms of the Lynch film, Frank Herbert gave David Lynch leeway to do the weirding modules and that is something I'll talk about in the future because it actually came from the book itself based on certain quotes from the book. But in terms of the weirding way in Denis Villeneuve's Dune, it's going to be handled book accurate. So what I mean by that is there will be no weirding modules, it will be a proper element in the movie based on movement. And the Children of Dune miniseries handle that quite well I think. But there definitely will not be any weirding modules in Denis Villeneuve's Dune. Scott asks, how does Villeneuve handle the voice? And he hopes it's not the demonic sounding voice again, hoping it's a bit more subtle. I cannot talk about the specifics of the voice, but what I can tell you is, that the voice will sound otherworldly, it will have a distinct difference to normal speaking voice. Now there have been discussions about what the voice actually should be, what it is, should it just be a normal voice that is a convincing type of voice, or should it have a strange kind of sound to it. Denis Villeneuve is going for a strange kind of sound, just because it's easier to distinguish that this is the voice, quote unquote, the voice, rather than just a normal speaking voice. It's just easier in the film sense, it's easier in general. So there will be a strangeness to that voice to distinguish it from other voices. Whether or not it will be actually demonic, I cannot say, but I do know that it will be otherworldly. But as you say, I'm sure he'll come up with something cool. TOH786 asks, Dune is full of Arabian and Islamic references. Were any of these elements censored, restricted due to the current political climate? 
I think I know what you're trying to ask and I do not think that there are elements that are censored or restricted. I think the issue that Dune has is the problem of time and how much they can include in a movie. There's only a maximum of three hours or three and a half hours of screen time where you have to fit in many different elements. You have to fit in a whole world. You have to fit in a whole new universe of characters and factions and houses and groups groups, but Denis Villeneuve I do not think is shying away from these terms, these references. They will be spoken, they will be talked about in Denis Villeneuve's Dune. And it is going to stir up a little bit of a debate, I think. But the good thing about that is it does get us talking and we will be talking about these things when they are portrayed on screen and what they mean in the world today. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Prawncus asks, considering how many themes and ideas are tackled in the novel, which did they choose to focus on and how? Also, how do they go about world building and how do they portray the Bene Gesserit abilities on film? The Bene Gesserit are a main element in this film. They are one of the dominant forces in this movie. Their manipulation will be known, it will, it will be no secret. It will directly affect the characters in impactful ways and so they will be portrayed as best as they can be, I think. The way they go about world building will be in a simple, summarized form uh, initially, and then through the character performances and the storyline, they will link things back to houses or groups or ideologies or such and such. So they basically use the main narrative to include these extra elements so that people will realize, oh, that's a Mentat, oh, that's a Souk Doctor, oh, that's a Harker and oh that's uh, the Emperor and his Sardaukar legions. Kane asks will it have the Weirding Way martial art and the answer is yes it will have the Weirding Way martial art. It will be portrayed for sure in several scenes. Lucas asks if we will get a navigator scene and the answer is yes, we will get a navigator scene, but it will not be as you expect. It will not be like the David Lynch movie, and it will be brief. Dom asks how strongly will it hint at or foreshadow events in Dune Messiah, if at all? And that's a great question. It will hint for certain at events in Dune Messiah, but it will hint in ways that are not in the conventional sense. It'll be through visions. Again, it'll be brief, but they do have to build that anticipation for the future of Dune so that people come back to watching Dune part two and hopefully more films if things go well. So they do want to build a sense of a second part, a future for Dune, so Dune Messiah will be hinted at. Miles asks how will they handle the essential internal monologue? Another great question. They will handle internal monologues, but very briefly, in very subtle ways, and they will use voiceovers for certain elements too, in very small ways, but significant ways, I would say, almost acting like an internal monologue. And I think this way works. I always knew that Denis Villeneuve was going for a more literal approach. I knew he wasn't going to go for internal monologues. He's more of a show don't tell type of director. So he will definitely be showing or portraying scenes through dialogue, but mostly through the acting, through the performances of these actors. And it'll be interesting to see a Dune film without an internal monologue. We did kind of get to see that with the Dune miniseries and the Children of Dune miniseries, but this is now Dune as a film. So seeing the performances just play out without the internal monologues through the performances, through the dialogue, will be very interesting. M wonders if or how they are going to adapt Alia in part two. My answer to that is, how do you know she will not be in part one? Andrew asks how much screen time Zendaya has and if Zendaya and Dave Bautista directly work together in the movie. Now as far as I know, Zendaya and Dave did not have 
scenes together so they did not work together they may have met on set they may have met in the studio but they don't have any scenes together as to how much screen time Zendaya has, she has a generous amount, believe it or not, she has a generous amount. Obviously, if you look at the Dune book, there is a period where she does come into play. So there are the visions which Paul have of Cheney, and then you have the moment where Paul meets Cheney. So you have those scenes and then the rest of the scenes afterwards that occur. So if I were to offer a calculation as to how much screen time Zendaya has in Denis Villeneuve's Dune, I would say about half the film. Now, of course, these things are subject to change. We don't know how things are going to be cut. Maybe some things will end up in Dune Part 2. There are so many things that do change before the final product, but that is the best answer I can give you so far. Overlooked Pictures asks, why are they wearing plate armor? Now that's a good question. The images we saw of Oscar Isaac in this metallic type armor, those suits are suits designed to control the heat of a person so that they are cooled to the right temperature while being in a desert environment. So it's more like a cooling system for the body, but it does also protect. That's what it's designed for. It's designed to protect the body. Dan asks, is Jameis's coffee service featured? Now there will be spiced coffee in Dune, there has to be, but it won't be the coffee service of Jameis, it will be something else. But spiced coffee will be served in Dune. Denis asks, will Irulan appear in the first movie just like she appears in the sci-fi series, regardless of her absence in the first book? Now the answer to that is she will not appear in Denis Villeneuve's Dune as far as I know. She may appear in part two. Again, this goes back to Denis trying to create a, a faithful adaptation of Dune. Carol Haas asks, in the first book, the war on machines is barely mentioned and or explained. What exactly is a thinking machine is quite vague and I wonder how the film will deal with this topic to make it seem logical. The concept of thinking machines is going to be tackled very early on in the film. It's going to be mentioned and then we will move on quickly because it's almost irrelevant at this point because there are no more thinking machines causing any direct influence to, to the narrative itself. So the film won't go into too much detail about thinking machines to save time, precious screen time. Tecumseh asks how fat the Baron will be. He will be extremely fat, he will be obese, he has been described as a rhino in human form by the actor himself, Stellan Skarsgård, so I believe he will be book accurate in terms of size for sure. And Stellan won't just be digitally made fat, he wore a bodysuit, it will be real prosthetics and a real suit that he wears to appear enlarged. So again this goes back to Denis trying to make practical effects, practical sets, practical costumes, practical appearances. He wants everything to be as real as possible in frame. And that looks like that's all we have. Thank you guys for asking your questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you to my Patreons for your support. If you like my videos, you can support me on Patreon. It helps me grow. It helps me make more content for you guys. And until next time, see you later.